You might have heard about the massive wave of social struggle sweeping Greece, sweeping Spain. The indignados have become a common household name over the last two years and the general strikes rocking Greece have inspired millions across the globe. Yet we haven't heard anything about the, one of the other pig states inside of the European Union, Portugal. In the last two years we have seen the biggest wave of demonstrations, strikes and direct action since the fall of the Salazar dictatorship in 1974. On the 15th of September 2012, more than 1.5 million people protested under the banner of Keselisha Troika, screw the Troika, against the dictates of the European Central Bank, IMF and European Union. Uh, only a couple of months later, on the 14th of November 2012, hundreds of thousand trade unionists went on strike in solidarity with their European brothers and sisters in Greece and Spain on the on the day of the European-wide general strike. Metros were shut down, schools were shut down, university students went on strike, and people filled the streets of Lisbon. Dock workers threw sound grenades, people used flares, and there was sheer excitement on the streets of Lisbon. However, on the 2nd of March 2013, again a couple of months later, people came out again in full force more than 1.5 million people were estimated to take part in the protests that time. And yet, what has changed? Has anything changed in Portugal for the good? After the 15th of September 2012, the pension reform which the government was adamant to pass didn't pass. Yet today, Portugal is faced with its harshest austerity measures that it has ever experienced. Teacher salaries below one th are below 1,500 euros unemployment rates are 27 percent and many young Portuguese people have now had to migrate to countries such as Britain, Germany and even many people are moving to Mozambique or Brazil where economic growth still prevails. The situation is one of hopelessness, despair and general malaise. Teacher salaries have been cut. Services are being privatized. The water and sanitation system has been privatized and the Troika of the European Union, ECB and IMF is demanding more and more cuts to public services, to health, to education. The German finance minister Wolfgang Schäuble has labelled Portugal the good pupil of the Eurozone as it has abided to the Troika's austerity measures and to its bailout requirements. These austerity measures, which the so uh, social democratic and the conservative government are abiding to are part of the refoundation of the Portuguese state. The Portuguese state until, recent, until recently has been marked by the legacy of the Portuguese revolution of 1974 and 1975 which brought about the welfare state that granted millions of people civic rights, democratic rights and economic rights on an unprecedented scale. The Portuguese Revolution of 1974 and 1975 established the welfare state. It was part of the post-revolutionary settlement which established peace in, in a revolutionary torn country. The revolution started with, uh, with a military coup d'etat, also labelled the coolest military coup d'etat in history. On the 25th of April 1974, middle-ranking officers of the MFA uh, called, called, for, uh, called for the overthrow of the Salazar dictatorship. They called on people to stay at home and to, keep, and to keep the peace. However, people, worn down by the military efforts of the colonial wars in Mozambique, worn down by the fact that they had no democratic rights whatsoever, came into the streets and celebrated the fact that the Salazar dictatorship had been overthrown. They stuck carnations, which would become the symbol of the revolution, down the barrels of the guns of the military, of the military officers and the conscript soldiers, which has established the revolution in the first instance. But unlike the military, who wanted a peaceful transition to Western capitalism, the people of Portugal wanted more. They wanted dignity. They wanted to question the very fundamentals of a capitalism which had wreaked havoc not only on Portugal but on the world, on the, on the colonies of former Portugal as well. In a matter of 19 months they occupied schools, factories, established cooperatives and went far beyond the kind of parliamentary democracy that we know today or the, or the Soviet monolith 
which, in, which continued to dominate communist and socialist discourses at the time. Instead, they showed that there was a real viable alternative based on real democracy and popular power from, from below. And for a moment, it looked that Portugal could overthrow capitalism and the Portuguese people could take control of their own lives. However, the forces of the military didn't want to take it further. The Socialist Party, established in the midst of the revolution, also didn't want to take it any further and tried, and tried to take control of the revolutionary process and ultimately they would win, as the organization of the revolution was too weak. On the 25th of November 1975, nearly one and a half years after the revolutionary turmoil had begun, a number of military soldiers who had occupied a barrack on the outskirts of Lisbon were left alone to hang in the dark by both the Communist Party of the time as well as the Socialist Party and didn't have the chance to take the revolution any steps further. Social democracy had been established and that cemented the, draw, that cemented the transition to Western capitalism and the integration into the EEC nowadays known as the, as the European Union. While many of the social gains have been eroded over the last couple of decades, the Portuguese revolution nonetheless continues to inspire young and old activists alike. On student actions, people continue to sing Afonso Seca's Grandola Villa Morena loudly as if it was the revolution today. On other demonstrations, people continuously refer to the revolution as their reference point for the social struggle today. Speaking to workers, you will continuously hear about what kind of advantages the Portuguese revolution and what kind of difference the Portuguese revolution had made to the lives of millions of people on the small island strip on, European, on Europe's Atlantic coast. It is questionable whether the revolution continues today. We have seen a lot of movement, people demonstrating in the streets, students occupying their universities, workers coming out on strike and participating in general strikes, but we haven't seen the kind of fundamental change that we saw in the years of 74, 75, where people took control of their own lives, started to run production, organized in, neighbor, in neighborhood commissions and started to cleanse the entire Portuguese system of those who had collaborated with the fascist dictatorship under Salazar. Today, we need to ask ourselves, what does real change look like? What does real democracy and popular power from below look like? And the question can only be answered by those participating in the struggles today. The Portuguese revolution acts as an example for and acts as an example and an inspiration for those struggling today. But in order for those struggling today to make a long-lasting change, it requires the kind of sweeping changes that were made in the years following the revolution and in the midst of social turmoil. The crisis in Portugal is not only an economic crisis. It isn't only a financial crisis. It is a veritable regime crisis. Where the, where the governing coalition of the Social Democratic and the Conservative coalition continue to be confronted by mass demonstrations. Last July, for example, the government was on the brink of collapse with several ministers threatening to resign, then threatening not to resign, then being forced to resign and a reshuffling government took place. However, the long-lasting change that the Portuguese people are fighting for has not happened yet. While the government goes from crisis to crisis and plunges ever deeper into abyss, the Portuguese people who have been fighting the austerity measures seem not to be strong enough to break the, co the coalition which, which goes against the will of, of its very own people. Yet amidst all of this term oil, there are new political alternatives which are shaping the future of Portugal today. Since the late 1990s, since the rise of the new anti-capitalist movements across the, across the globe, we have also witnessed new types of movements and new political alternatives inside of Portugal. Precarious Inflexivis, an organization which organizes precarious workers, 
has been organizing Euro May Days, has been organizing demonstrations and even strikes by precarious workers. Most recently they have organized a strike of call center workers in Lisbon that provide a very vital telemedicine service which has been sold off to a French holding company. And we have also seen political alternatives such as the Bloco de Esquerda, the left bloc, which has been fighting inside of the social movements as part of as part of these struggles as well as in parliament against the austerity measures imposed by imposed by the government the question is is to what extent the, these political formations can connect with the new social struggles that have emerged on the streets spontaneously while Portugal might not be heading for a revolution in its immediacy, Portugal can act as an inspiration to millions of people across the world who are facing the same kind of devastating austerity measures from their respective governments. The Portuguese people have shown that it is possible to fight even under the most severe circumstances. They have shown that past legacies such as the revolution can continue to inspire people, can continue to provide people with a link between the past, the present and the future. As Joe Strummer of The Clash once said, the future is unri unwritten. Portugal stands at crossroads and it is the people of Portugal that will decide which direction Portugal will take.